guys and welcome to this new video. In this one we're going to be learning about CMake generators. But before we do that, what is a generator? I am going to try and say this as simply as I can. A generator is a way to tell CMake which world system it's going to use to generate a project for. For example, in the few lectures that we have done before, we have seen that it is possible to generate a project for Visual Studio on Windows. It is possible to generate a main GW project for Windows and use the GCC compiler. We're going to see how we can do that. It is possible to generate a Ninja project. Ninja is another build system that you can use to build your C++ projects. And you can let CMake generate build files for the Ninja build system. And this is really cool. It is also possible to use Unix make files on Linux or use Ninja. And we're going to see that this is possible. If you go on your system and say CMake help, you're going to see that you're going to get a lot of information. But one of the important things you get from that is the generators that CMake supports. And again, these are things that CMake is going to use to know which build system to generate a project for. By default on Windows, CMake is going to generate a Visual Studio project, but you can see that it is possible to generate other projects for other build systems. For example, it is possible to generate a Unix make files on Windows. It is possible to generate project for code blocks. This is another IDE you can use on Windows. It is possible to generate projects for code light. I think that's possible, but we're not going to use any of those things. What I want you to see now is that we can use Ninja, another build system I have on my system here. And we can also use MinGW make files. So let's go down and see if we can get our hands on that. Okay, we have MinGW make files here. And uh, this is a generator that is going to use the GCC compiler I have installed on my system here. So let's try these things out. I am going to clear out of this. And I am going to show you that I am in the build directory of my project. This is the full path to my project here. This is the project we did in the last lecture. And I wanted to call CMake to build my project here. In the last lecture, we have seen that it is possible to call CMake without specifying a generator. That's what we have been doing so far. We can say CMake and we can tell it to go in our source folder and build the project that is there. And you see that it is selecting the Visual Studio compiler or the compiler that comes with Microsoft Visual Studio. And it's going to use that to generate our build files. So this is what is going to be generated by default. But by now, you must know that I also have a GCC compiler, which is under the MinGW project. If I go in C, and go in a main GW64 here, you're going to see that I have a G++ compiler that I can use to build my projects. So generators are a way to specify the build system you want to generate build files for. You see, we have generated a project for Microsoft Visual Studio by default, but I don't want to use this. I want to use the GCC compiler I have on my Windows system here. The way I can say that, we're going to clear and we're going to say CMake and uh, help to get help. And if we go up, we're going to see that this is the generator we want to use. So the name of this is going to be grabbed here. I am going to copy this because I'm going to use this in a minute. I am going to do LS. I have my build files here. I am going to remove everything because I don't want this anymore. I am going to say yes because I want to remove everything here. And if I do an S, I am going to see that this folder is empty now. Now I am going to call CMake and I am going to pass a flag called G to specify the generator that I want to use. I am going to put that in quotes like you see here and I am going to go in and I am going to tell it to go and find the source files in the source folder. If I do this, you're going to see that it's going to choose my GCC compiler and it has generated build files in this folder here. This happens to be the same folder we are in. So if we do LS, you're going to see that it has generated build files. And this happens to be make files. You see my make file here. If you know about make, you're going to see that this is the make file here. But if you don't know about the make build system, please search that in Google. You're going to find a lot of resources to learn about that. 
Now that we have the build files, we want to know how to build our project here. And what we use is a tool we have in our set of tools from G GCC. And uh, if you go in, you're going to find a thing called MinGW32Make. That's what we're going to call to build our project. Let's go down and really show you that. We're going to say MinGW32Make. Where is that? This tool here. If we were on Linux, we would just say make, but on Windows, we have to go through this little guy here. So what we're going to do is say MinGW. Let's go back and see the name because I can't remember that. We're going to say a dash and say make. So let's do that. We're going to say make here. And this is going to build our project. You see, it is building our C++ project and it's going to build our target, which is hello binary. If we go back and uh, see our CMake lists, that the txt file, we're going to see that our target, which is through this add command here, is hello up binary. And this has generated a binary for us. If we do ls, we're going to see that we have hello app binary.exe and we can run that. Okay, we can run this program and it's going to say whatever it was saying last time we modified the source file for this little guy here. So now on Windows, we have the ability to either use the project from Visual Studio or we can use a MinGW32 project and this is going to work really well. But this is really not all, let's clear and do ls. I think I should really show this through a terminal, uh, through Windows terminal. So let's do that and I am going to right click and open in Windows Terminal. This is a terminal that is going to show things a little bit nicely. We're going to be able to increase the size of things. So let's go CD and we're going to land in this folder here. If we do LS, we're going to see our make file. Let's bring the size up so that you can see these things. If we do see make help, you're going to see that there is another generator we can use and that happens to be Ninja. Can I find Ninja here? Yes, it is down here. This is another build system we can use. If you don't know about it, you can come to our search engine here and say Ninja build system. We're going to get a link to that and uh, you can uh, learn all you want about this, but it is something really cool. It is usable both on Windows and Linux. I think it is also usable on Mac. You can download the Ninja binary. If we click on this link here, we're going to be taken to GitHub and we're going to see that we can download this for Linux, Mac, and Windows. So it is going to work pretty well. So you can download this and install this on your system. I am putting mine in my C drive. If I go in C, I am going to find that I have Ninja here and I have my binary here. Another thing I did on Windows is add this to my environment variables. Let's do environment variables. And we're going to find this little guy. If I go in my environment variables and look at my path, you're going to see that the path to Ninja is in my environment variables here. So what I can do now, because I have that, I can come to my terminal here and say Ninja and say help. I think I can say that. Hmm? Let's say Ninja properly and help. And I am going to get the help. If you want, you can learn all you can about this, but we're going to just use CMake and generate a project that we can build with Ninja. So what we can do now is run CMake help again. And we're going to see that we can use Ninja as our build system. We have the option here. So I am going to grab this name here and I'm going to call CMake. Let's increase the size a little bit so that you can see this entire thing. We're going to say CMake and we're going to specify our generator using the G flag here. We're going to put that in, that happens to be Ninja. And what, and what we want to build is, huh? did we delete the files we had before? Let's do ls. And we are in our source folder. Let's cd into our build directory. And we're going to remove everything here. Yes, we want to remove everything. We're going to clear. And we're going to scroll CMake. And we're going to specify our G flag to say that we want to specify a build system. We're going to specify Ninja and we're going to tell CMake to go in our source folder and build whatever it finds in there. We're going to wait a little bit. This is going to go and find the project, build it and generate a Ninja project that we can build with Ninja.
And this is really cool. If we do LS, we're going to see that we have a world.ninja file. This is uh, our Ninja project. And all we have to do in this folder is say Ninja. So Ninja is going to build whatever we have in this project. It's going to generate a binary called hello app binary.exe. And if we do LS, we're going to find our binary file here and we can run it by running hello app binary here. And this is going to tell us what we want. So now this brings the number of options we have on Windows to three. We can either use a Visual Studio project. We can use a MinGW make files project. We can even generate a project for Ninja. And this is really cool. This is how you can use your generators. You just use the G flag and specify the build system you want CMake to generate a project for. I really hope this is super clear. We can hop over to our Linux box. We can do that. Okay, we are in. We can uh, clear this crap and uh, do CD to go in our home directory. We can increase the size of this little guys. That's why I use Windows Terminal. It is really cool. We can CD into our CMake series. And if we do LS, we're going to find our episode. We're going to change into that folder. We do LS, we're going to change into our world directory. If we do LS, we're going to find a Unix make files project we have generated earlier. We're going to remove everything from here. So we're going to remove recursively. And we want to remove everything from here. If we do LS, we're going to find that we don't have anything in here. We have seen that we can call CMake without specifying a world system. And we're going to go in our source folder and build whatever it finds in there. By default, it is going to generate a Unix make files project on Linux. You see, it has selected my GCC compiler and it has generated my project here. And I can say make to build this project and it is going to build it. Let's wait. We're going to see that now we have a hello app binary here. We can run it and see the output from this program. But if we run CMake help, we're going to see that we have a bunch of generators we can also use. By default, it's going to use Unix make files, but it is also possible to use Ninja. If you happen to have all these things installed on your system, you can really use them. But for now, we're just going to use Ninja. I am going to assume you have Ninja installed on your Linux system. If you have it installed, if you do Ninja and do help, you're going to get this output here. I think you can also do Ninja version. Let's do that and see what we get. You're going to see the version printed out. So if you see a message like this, you're going to be ready to use your Ninja build system. But before I do that, I also want you to see that you can also specify the build system explicitly and use the default build system. Let's say CMake help to really do that. And you're going to see that we can use Unix make files. We didn't specify that, so CMake was choosing that, but you can also specify that directly. We're going to remove everything recursively here. Let's do that. And we're going to say CMake and say the generator, Let's say CMake properly. We're going to specify our generator to be Unix make files. And we're going to specify that we want to build whatever we have in our source folder. If we do that, this is going to build exactly like they did by default. And we're going to have our files in here. We can say make, not see make, make. And this is going to build the binary. We can run it. And this is going to work. But we can also use Ninja. To use Ninja, we're going to remove everything we have in here. So we're going to remove recursively everything. If we look, we have nothing here. And we're going to say see make. We're going to specify that the generator we want to use is Ninja. And we're going to tell CMake to go in our source directory and build whatever it finds in there. It's going to select a compiler, but it's going to be generating a Ninja project. If we do LS, you're going to see that we have our build Ninja file. We can do Ninja here. And this is going to build our project. It's going to link it. And we're going to have a binary here. And this is really cool. We can run it. And this is going to run our project. This is really all I wanted you to see in this lecture, that you have options on the tools you can use to build your project. And you tell CMake which build system it's going to generate a project for. 
using a generator. You can choose a generator and tell CMake to use it. On Windows, it is possible to generate a Visual Studio project. We have seen that it is possible to do that. We could also generate a MinGW project. We could generate a Ninja project. On Linux, we saw that it is possible to generate a Unix makefiles project. It is also possible to generate a Ninja project and use that. But this is really not all. If you want to see all the options, you can come to CMake and say help. And you're going to see all the generators that you can use on the system where you are running CMake. And this is going to give you more information that I could ever give you in a tutorial like this. This is really all I had to share in this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any feedback, please share in the comments below. I am interested in seeing what you think about these videos. And this is all for today. I will see you next time.